What should I do with my main residence when I plan to move overseas and become an expat? In this video today, we're going to dive into both the pros and cons of selling your property when you leave Australia and the pros and cons of retaining that property, how the tax rules work, what you need to consider, and how you can determine what is the right decision for you. Hi there, Jared Brown here, Australian expat financial planner. Thank you for tuning into the video today. We've got a lot to cover. One of the big decisions when it comes to becoming an expat is what to do with your main residence. Under the Australian tax rules, you can sell a property that's treated as your main residence and not incur any tax. But of course, this drums up a raft of other considerations when it comes to determining whether we should keep that property and rent it out, keep it and not rent it out, sell it, or even draw the equity to do something else. So let's dive into the pros and cons of selling that property first and foremost. When it comes to the pros of selling the property, so what are the positives, what are the main drivers that may cause us to lean towards selling that property instead of keeping it? Number one is the main residence exemption. Under the Australian tax rules, a property that is classed as your own home or as your primary residence is capital gains tax free. You can only claim one at one time, it must genuinely be your residence, but you can sell that and not incur a capital gains tax liability. Of course, check that with your accountant, make sure it's correct based on your situation. Now, why this is important is because that may mean that you can put that money to work elsewhere, which brings us to the reason number two or the second driver when it comes to why we might want to sell that property. And that is having the liquidity to invest that money elsewhere. We could decide that that money can perform better for us in shares or in ETFs or index funds or some other investment which can be particularly attractive if we're moving to Singapore, Hong Kong, or another jurisdiction where there is no capital gains tax. Obviously, if we retain that property in Australia, capital gains tax is not zero, but if we instead invest that money in shares or index funds or ETFs, then there is no capital gains tax for non-residents of Australia investing as Singapore tax residents. So of course, quite an attractive one as well. And of course, number three, when it comes to why we might want to sell that property is we don't then need to deal with the hassle of dealing with property managers, dealing with maintenance on the property, tenants moving in and out, property inspections, all of the other general administrative headaches that can occur when it comes to owning an investment property. So there's some of the main drivers we might want to consider when it comes to why we should sell that property. Let's have a look at some of the drawbacks of selling a property or the cons of selling that property. Now, the first major drawback when it comes to selling our property is, of course, the market conditions. We may not be moving out of that property at a great time to sell. We might be moving out in winter, we might be moving out in the peak of COVID, and it's just a terrible time to actually sell a property in Australia. Now, of course, dust off the crystal ball and determine whether it's going to get better in the short term, but this is a real consideration we need to think about. And of course, issue number two when it comes to why we might not want to sell the property is the re-entry risk. Are we going to go back and live in that property in future? And if so, what is it going to cost us to get back in? Transaction costs with property are very high. We need to pay agent fees, potentially tax, stamp duty, all of the other costs that, that we actually incur of getting in and out of the property market. So we need to give that some real thought and whether it actually makes sense for us to sell to then buy back into that same market. If we know we're never moving back into that property or we're never moving back to that area, or we're saying goodbye to Australia forever, then that may be less of a consideration. But don't ignore that one because we'd hate to be in a situation where we sell that property, we pay all the transaction fees, and our five year plan turns into two, and now we're moving back to then go and buy something that is a lot more expensive than what we sold. Let's have a look at some of the pros and cons of retaining that property instead of selling it. So first and foremost, when it comes to the positives or the pros of retaining that property instead of selling it, number one is the potential for capital growth. 
If it's a good quality asset in a good area that stacks up as an investment, we may actually want to retain it whether we plan to move back into it or not. If it's going to be working for us, the leveraged growth effect of property over time can be a powerful way to actually accumulate wealth. Number two is rental income. If it's in a good area with good owner occupier appeal that is going to be rented easy that we can generate a good income from, then it may not actually cost us a great deal to hold that asset either. It may appeal to the right tenant, which may mean less maintenance, the rent gets paid on time and allows us to pay down the mortgage over time. And number three is really managing that re-entry risk. We might plan to be overseas for five or eight or 10 or 25 years, but what happens if we move back in two or three or five, we lose a job, little Johnny needs to go to school back in Australia, we've got aging parents, whatever the driver may be, we need to move back. Now we have that property waiting for us. We don't need to worry about getting into the market again or paying the stamp duty or paying those fees or even prices running away from us. Let's have a look at some of the cons of retaining that property. Now, when it comes to retaining the property in Australia, there are a few key drawbacks. Number one is capital gains tax. Now, unfortunately, we do not get a capital gains tax exemption or main residence exemption on a property that we've lived in as an expat if we sell it whilst we are overseas. The main residence exemption allows you to live in a property as your main residence, rent it out for six years, and you can sell that property within or at that six year mark and not incur capital gains tax, providing you're not claiming another property as your main residence for that period of time. Now, if you sell that property as an expat, that main residence exemption does not apply. So you pay tax on the full gain from purchase price to sale, subject to or reduced by any eligible deductions. That can be quite a big hit and quite an expensive task or bill to actually have to pay. Number two is the fact that we don't get a 50% capital gains tax discount as non-residents of Australia. If you own shares or you own an investment property in Australia for more than 12 months as an investment, then you will get a 50% discount on that gain if it's held in your own name and some other ownership structures as well. Now, as a non-resident or as an expat, we don't get that 50% discount. Now, what that means is that if we live overseas for a portion of holding the property and in Australia, then that 50% discount could be apportioned or prorated based on the time that we spent living and working overseas. So again, we wanna give some thought to what that bill could be, what that lack of discount could actually mean, and therefore whether it makes sense to hold or to sell that property. And of course, the other key challenges of retaining a property in general are the usual headaches or administrative burden of having to deal with tenants, with property managers, the roof needs repair, the garden needs mowing, whatever else might be involved, even though a property manager is in place, there is still going to be some admin that you need to take care of. We then do, of course, have the potential for other bills like land tax, can continue to accumulate. Victoria has been a great example that has recently increased land tax. You can find out a bit more about that in a recent video and the blog post that I put out. But of course, when it comes to your main residence, there is no right or wrong. Whether you hold it, whether you sell it, do what is right for you, seek advice from your financial planner, from your accountant, don't make that decision blindly and make sure it's fully informed. Any questions at all, drop me a note in the comments, reach out directly, I'd love to hear from you. Please do remember to like, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.